Well, I'm here in West Port Arthur with Hilton Kelly, the Hello. 2011 Goldman Prize winner. That's me. <laughs> and, and here we are. This is Kelly's Kitchen, the famous uh, soul food restaurant here in the city of Port Arthur, Texas. Uh, we put this restaurant here because we wanted to be a cornerstone for the community and a catalyst for other businesses to come back to the West Side community to help revitalize the area and bring some commerce. Um, this was a restaurant before I got it, but the lady who ran it, Miss Nurse, she became very ill and she is presently on dialysis. Uh, she's been on dialysis now for about six years. I picked up the restaurant about two years ago and uh, we started with the same traditional type of soul food, but my wife is a pretty good soul food preparer and uh, people really enjoy the food that we prepare here at Kelly's Kitchen. This is not the busiest area, but it's not about how many people we can get into the building. It's just about the, the, the quality of service that we could give to a community that is in desperate need of some type of service. There are no restaurants on this side of town other than Kelly's Kitchen. Hilton, I want to say that's some of the best food I ever ate. Well, thank you. I mean, we, some of our specialties is cornbread dressing, uh, okra with shrimp and sausage, smothered pork chops, uh, baked chicken, and also we do a hell of a good smoked barbecue rib, something you're going to have to try when you come back. Okay. Oh, man, the smoked barbecue rib with a heavy layer of barbecue sauce, honey barbecue sauce. It's, it's just the best. So, uh, <laughs> but Port Arthur has a lot of potential. Now, right just a block away from the restaurant, here you have the old post office building here. And um, it's beautiful architecture on the structure itself. And uh, the building is just sitting there. I think the city is trying to sell it for about a dollar to try and encourage people to come to the area and take advantage of it and start some type of business. We're hopeful that we can get some type of solar panel business going here or some type of renewable style energy uh, uh, company to come to the Port Arthur and help put people to work. Utilize some of these dilapidated buildings we have. In Port Arthur, we have 14.4% unemployment and uh, it's, a, it's a lot of young people here that are looking for work and we are ready to look at green technology and start building solar panels or wind turbines or something. We have the infrastructure to facilitate those type of companies that want to come here. And as we know, uh, the present administration has federal dollars to help in projects like that, along with some type of angel that may want to invest in, in a project such as solar panels. I can visualize it, Hilton. How many of these um, of your businesses are shuttered right now? Wow. I, I heard something like 70%. Is that? Yeah, 70% of the structures in our downtown area. This is downtown Port Arthur. Mm -hmm. And I would say about 70% of them are boarded up. Now, this is the old Sabine Hotel that was built in the 30s, uh, still standing. They, they had some plans for it to turn it into a... Uh, a Lamar State College students living quarters mm. and at the bottom it was going to be some stores and, and print shops but I think it just cost the, the guy who was going to do it it was a little out of his budget and uh, he pulled out of the deal but now they have some more plans the Golden Triangle Environment Center right across the street here is one of the newer structures here and what they do is job training life skills training for some of the locals and they also help to place some of the people that go through training there in welding jobs and scaffold building jobs. So yeah, this is future plans for the uh, uh, Sabine Hotel. The Community Development Corporation, Aurora. A new beginning, so we don't know exactly when construction is going to start or redevelopment. Oh, this used to be, you grew up here. Yes. This used to be a bustling downtown, I understand. Yeah. <clears throat> well, yeah, downtown Proctor, whenever you wanted to come downtown to shop or, or, you know, go somewhere to shop, this was the place to come. It was a time you couldn't even cross the street because wow. of the traffic back in, the, you know, 67, 1968. Well into the, uh, into the 80s, you know, we had a nice little amount of traffic flow here on Proctor. 
but around 1990, everything seemed to, to, to taper off, and uh, there was a new town in town structure going on. They tried to coerce people out of Port Arthur, and they moved them out on Highway 69, where you have a lot of uh, uh, fast food restaurants and you have a few golf courses out there. They started building these these apartment complexes in large numbers, trying to lure a subservient group of, of people to that area so that they can do the small jobs and kind of forget about life, you know, life altering jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, and that sort of helped to drain this community of its residents. Not to mention the fact that people were looking for ways to get out of here because of the large amount of pollution that's released in this area. I think that had a lot to do with the flight from our area as well. But yet we've started to turn that, that boat around and uh, by pushing EPA to step up on their enforcement actions and their regulations. So things are turned around. And for those folks who are, who are still stuck here, they deserve a better quality of life than what they're getting. They deserve to breathe clean air and drink clean water. That is a basic human right that cannot be ignored. Yeah. We have over 5,000 people still living within this area in West Port Arthur that still would like to take advantage of this downtown area that the city have neglected to invest that to invest back into and to encourage uh, uh, new businesses to come take advantage of. Can we go look at some of that pollution? Sure. What we'll do now, we'll just take a U-turn here and we're going to head to West Port Arthur uh, across the railroad tracks closer to the plants and take a look at what's going on over there. Hilton, can you tell me more about the railroad tracks, what, what you were sharing with me earlier? I found it really disturbing, and I think a lot of the American people don't, they don't know that sort of thing. Yeah, well, here in the South, if you go to Louis, if you leave Port Arthur, Texas, which is, which is right on the Louisiana-Texas border, and you go to Louisiana, what you'll find is that you have a lot of African-American communities that have these railroad tracks that seem to run right through the middle of them. And these railroads, historically, the tracks have been used to divide and segregate. Now, here in Port Arthur, we have a railroad track that runs from south to north, which divides the east from the west. On the west end of town, this is the only place that African Americans could live back in the 30s and 40s, 50s, 60s, and up into the 70s. Um, and whites were on the east side of town. And what helped to define that was that old traditional railroad track that you see in many southern communities uh, across the United States. And in big cities, they use uh, uh, freeways. I know I've, I've read some history about uh, 580 in Oakland, California, which helped to divide black from white. And uh, those, those uh, uh, institutions, well, they're, they're gone now, but still the remnants of what was done to keep us divided, keep black and white divided and segregated is still uh, visible today. And that's what those railroad tracks represent. Uh, there was a lot of suffering because of those railroad tracks. As a matter of fact, whenever a train would go across those tracks, uh, people could not cross into the other side. As a matter of fact, a young lady lost her baby because she couldn't get medical attention when she was given birth because all the hospitals was on the east side of town and we all lived on the west side of town. And there was no way out. And if the train is no, sitting on the tracks, you can't get no out. No way out. And finally, in 1968, um, the, the black leaders in West Port Arthur got together and said that they were sick and tired of being put in a position by this railroad track and the trains to where they couldn't get the health care. So they fought and they got the city to put in an underpass where traffic coming outside the west west side of town could go under the tracks, you know, but like an underpass, and come into the east side of town. But to this day, that's still the only way in and out of the west side of Port Arthur. One way out. One way in, one way out. Wow. To this day. And uh, that railroad track runs at least two miles across the town. I think that's hard for people to imagine unless they've seen it. 
And yeah, yeah. It's really difficult to imagine that, you know, uh, folks would have went to such extremes just to keep that division between the races. But as history has shown us uh, through film and books that this actually took place and there are still people out there today that would like to see that old Jim Crow style of living come right back. And um, me, I'm, I'm happy wherever I'm loved and wherever I can give love. And uh, I don't want to live, I don't care to live next to folks that don't want to live next to me. And Amen. You know, I'm, I'm happy to be in my community or whatever, but I think the world is my community. Yeah. I have a right to live any way I choose. And I think people should be able to go uh, anywhere they choose to go. So I think it's wrong to try to segregate people and isolate people simply because of their beliefs or the color of their skin. Right now what we're doing, we're going down Houston Avenue. Now Houston Avenue historically was a, a booming area as well. Uh, we had nightlife here where there were nightclubs. Uh, there was a place called Antoine's Auditorium where uh, um, Ray Charles performed numerous times. Ray Charles. Um, Aretha Franklin and uh, uh, Al Green. And this was during, the, in the 70s, this took place. Um, but now all that's gone because there's no reinvestment in this community. Even though we sit on the fence line of 30 and $40 billion a year companies, this community is dilapidated and falling apart. So we have finally got the Motiva oil refinery and Valero oil refinery to start reinvesting back into this area. Uh, I'm just hopeful that it's not too late. I don't believe that it is. So this is why we're constantly pushing to get them to do things in the community, to put back in this community what they've taken from it. Well, Hilton, I just want to say that um, I'm definitely feeling the love in your community. Well, thank you. Yeah, we, we really love to support those and, and look out for those here that, that have a love for our community and for our, our plight. We are pushing hard to turn down our uh, environmental conditions because as each year we're being exposed in this community to dangerous toxins, our kids are being exposed to uh, worker level exposures to sulfur dioxide and 1-3 butadiene, you name it, we're, we're breathing it and we are doing everything we can. CETA is the Community in Power and Development Association. We're doing everything we can to help eliminate some of the health disparities in our community as well. Um, because we don't have any clinic on this side of town. A lot of people are ill because of what they're breathing. And we're doing everything we can to close the health gap between the have and the have-nots and those who are being exposed. Did you say there's no clinic on the west side of town? No, not one. And uh, we've gotten the Gulf Coast Health Clinic to agree to build a clinic annex on the west side of town. So that's forthcoming. Um, but yet it's not there yet. And our organization, CETA, has been pushing for the last 11 years since conception to get that done. Can you give us a website so people can check that out? Yeah, people can go to... amazing work. They can go to www.myceda.org, and that's www.mycida.org. That's myceda.org. Here's the railroad tracks. In, uh, Here's the traditional <coughs> railroad tracks, as you can see from north to south. And it... North to just... south. And it goes from the Port Arthur Ship Channel all the way into the refinery gates, the Motiva refinery gates. And Hilton, when we were stuck there for a moment, waiting for that train, yeah. and you told me that story, I could feel it. Mm -hmm. I could feel the trapped feeling, you know? it's, it's right. uh, I got a sense of it. And we would have had to go a whole mile to the, to the north to cross over those tracks to the east side of town. And it's... I, I think I just don't think people can. Most people can understand it unless they experience unless it. You experience. You know? Well, you know, back in the back in the '60s, in the '30s and '40s, long before I was born, on this side of town, what was good about having our own community is the fact that 
we were stronger than I believe when we when this was a predominant well African American community uh, that had to live on this side of town. Mm -hmm. Actually, we had doctors on this side of town. Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, pharmacists on this side of town. We had a movie theater on this side mm -hmm. of town. When the fair housing practice came in, in, in into action back in the 70s, well, everybody wanted to live in better communities. But we took care of our community on this side of the track. You had some areas that were kind of rough within this this five mile radius area here. Just but like everywhere, right? Just like everywhere. But for the most part, people on this side of, uh, of the track respect their property. Uh, the kids respected their elders. And we had all our, our, our needs met. We had grocery stores, movie theater, doctor's office. But when we had that, uh, that fair housing market come into play, it was a good thing, but at the same time, more of our prominent citizens moved out of the community which helped to take away those businesses. We had clothing stores, you name it. We had it here on the west side of Port Arthur. And uh, we're hopeful that we can rebirth that type of uh, commerce again in this community. We're going to do it because the people are still here. They need to be serviced. And this community shall not die, not long as I live. And right now, we are going to um, go up next to the fence line um, of the refineries, and I'm going to take you over by the Carver Terrace Housing Project, okay. which is the oldest government housing project in West Port Arthur. But we actually have three government housing projects on this side of town, Prince Hall Housing Project, Carver Terrace Housing Project, and Lewis Manor.